Oof. Or maybe not. Have you seen a return as poorly as this in a couple of matches back to back? She's totally rattled out here in both categories. Yeah, she's not reading it or just not reacting quick enough? Almost feel like she's overplaying her forehand. Hmm. This one's just on fire. Such a tough combo when your opponent's playing great and you don't feel like you can play the way you want to play. talking so much about Alexandrova's return hit points. This is where she's returning for the first serve contact point. Not one behind the baseline. And Iga's serve, first serve averaging 103. And Alexandrova having no problem making contact. Look where she's standing. It's working well. Strategy can always look beautiful on paper, but you've got to see the outcome. But it is uh, doing both things right now for Alexandrova. Simple, efficient. Love 40. And seemingly, Lindsay, effortless. Yeah. And she would bottle this hour and 11 minutes up she could she would it's just been a wonderful display from alexandrova trying to get the biggest win of her career oh and another one to add to the boutique collection of returns that we've seen this is off the charts tennis from alexandrova nothing that the world number one can do to stop it where Schwantek is struggling on both forms serve and return. Alexandrova has been absolutely perfect. But does the recovery start there? And it starts with getting back to the basics. All right, Petch starting to make returns. This is when, as a returner, you've got to figure something else out. Move your position around, maybe hold a different grip. Start to lean to a different serve that you have it. And that serve cannot continue to beat her. On the ad side, Alexandrova has gone wide two-thirds of the time. And that, is that, and that number's come down just slightly, but have to take that into account out there. <laughs> Wants to play with a slightly greater poker face than that. Stress style just getting ratcheted up a little. <laughs> it's just like a clinic out here. 
That's too good. Flat T serve. Eight ace. Average is usually around five. Above that against the world number one, one of the game's greatest ever returners. And a pretty quick match to already have eight. This is not a long three setter where that number might get a bit skewed. When you're not feeling the ball, it's surprising that she keeps jumping forward, trying to take it even earlier with a serve that skips through and stays low. is again just beautiful to watch somebody with that sort of confidence against the world number one alexander leads by five games to one she had such an amazing sliding door moment really that got her up right into the world's top 200 was that wasn't in qualifying in wimbledon in 2016 got in because somebody pulled out ended up beating on super beat uh, Stephanie Volk from uh, Switzerland having had to save a match point. Then it rained. It was like 13-11 in the third. Then it rained, so she got a day off. Then played Harriet Dart and beat her 13-11 in the third, saving a match point. Got into Wimbledon Major, then beat Ivanovic for <laughs> losing the second round. So a whole host of points, money at that stage of her career, which was hard to come by. Always really fun to learn the path and the stories of so many of these players. Whether it be one tournament that changed everything or an experience at some kind of tournament or clinic when they were younger. Women's draw here looking like they're going to be without the top two seats before the quarterfinals are even played. Lost Sabalenka a couple of nights ago. And Sviantek now in a tremendous amount of trouble. Everyone will be in a little bit of trouble tonight. Up to 29 winners. <laughs> 29 to 11. Almost had 30 there. That's the right serve as Lindsay's been calling for. Right through the middle of the box. At 115. Backed up with another one. That was... Uh, well, we're all sad tonight. Iga Sviantik is out of the Miami Open. Alexandrova from Russia certainly had her way with Iga Sviantik tonight. And she was so calm. And Iga was not. She was rattled. Uh, she was looking for help from her team. She um, uh, just seemed uh, not in this one for whatever reason. And I think uh, maybe it was fatigue. Uh, a lot of matches being played. Uh, throughout the last few months for Iga. And uh, this one just kind of caught up to her. We kind of saw this uh, last night. She lost the first set 7-6 and then really had to battle back, get an ugly win 
uh, if you will, um, against a 19-year-old. Uh, that was her second match in Miami, and then her third match tonight. She is out, and it is a somber feeling. I got to tell you, <laughs> it doesn't feel too good. Our beloved uh, Iga Fiontek is out of this tournament. But a lot more good matches to um, get to. Uh, Sakari is playing Robakina, and that's going to be a huge match tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be in the afternoon here in the U.S. Uh, in Poland, it is uh, evening-ish, evening nighttime. And uh, Sakari, of course, from Greece, Robakina from Russia, but plays for Kazakhstan. So that's going to be a really interesting match. Garcia, Caroline Garcia, is going to play Alexandrova now. Uh, could have been Sviantek. Now it's going to be Alexandrova. And then Pagula. I'm not sure who Pagula is going to play. And then Azarenka is playing Putin Seva, the very interesting Putin Seva, uh, who <laughs> kind of reminds me of Nick Kyrgios a little bit. <laughs> she's, a, she's a trip. But uh, who in the world is Pagula playing? I have not seen that one. I'm leaving someone else. So let me know in the comments who is Jessica Pagula playing. And um, more importantly, uh, since we cover so much Iga Sviantek uh, here on Best Muscle Video on YouTube, where is she going to be playing next? I was thinking maybe Stuttgart in Germany, but I got a feeling it might be before that. I sure hope not because Germany's, I don't think, till late April. I know that the Charleston Open is starting April 1st, but I don't think Sviantek is going to play that. Uh, so it'd be interesting to, please tell me in the comments, where is she going to play next? Um, very sad to see her bow out on this one. Uh, she will not be completing the sunshine double this year, like she did in 2022. Um, as, uh, Alexandrova just, just, I mean, let's be real. She just murdered her on court and, uh, in a very calm, methodical way. So pretty sad to see, but, uh, can't wait to see Gish Fiontek back on court again. Uh, she had... Good, good uh, couple matches and then uh, did not show up to this one. Uh, tough match at night. Uh, you never can tell what happens. Um, these night matches, that was a late match for Iga uh, pretty much tonight. No rain, del rain delays tonight, but um, a lot of rain delays throughout this tournament uh, over there in Florida. But uh, just uh, uh, Iga never really got into this one. I think it was officially 6-4, 6-2. And uh, we'll be seeing her again, hopefully soon. So let me know where she's going next. And um, hmm, I'm trying to think who I would want to want, want to win. I think this is a pretty pretty easy answer for me. Who do I want to win now that Sviantek is out? Um, I'm going to be pulling for Sakari. And if Sakari loses to Robakina, then I will then go with our beloved American here in the U.S., Jessica Pagula, the daughter uh, Buffalo Bills owner. <laughs> um, uh, it was fun watching Jessica Pugula yesterday. Uh, she was playing Layla Fernandez and there were some people with Bills hats, uh, in the crowd, which is weird because they're playing in Miami and Miami Dolphins are a rival, a big time division rival to the Buffalo Bills. That was kind of funny, but, uh, Jessica Pugula, um, is still in it. She is such a class act. Um, Love Caroline Garcia as well. Uh, great accent. Love the French accent. And uh, Sakari just makes me smile. And she's so athletic. I would say, uh, you know, Robakin has got the power. Sakari has got um, just amazing athleticism. Iga Sviantek's got the quickness. And Andy, Andy Roddick calls Iga's uh, forehand the best forehand on the women's tour. I bet Andy Roddick right now, who's about to... He's going to do some analysis on Tennis Channel uh, probably later tonight or tomorrow. Um, he's, I'm sure he's surprised that Iga lost this one. Uh, commentator uh, commentating tonight with Lindsay Davenport called this win the biggest win of Alexandrova's career. So that was interesting um, intake from him. And uh, uh, yeah, it's just somber. Um, if you're, I'm sure a lot of people in Poland are sad, but... Uh, <laughs> including myself, uh, so many Polish people, uh, in the, in North America as well. But, um, you know what it happens and, um, how many matches did Iga lose last year? We're still early in the season in the tennis season, 2024. Um, but I think I want to say last, was it last year? I've done so many things in my life. Don't kill me in the comments. Um, 
I've done so many things in my life since a year or two ago that I can't even remember if it was last year or 2022 when Iga went on that long, what was it, 38, 39 match streak. If memory serves me correctly, that was 2022. But um, she's uh, she's got a Hall of Fame career already. It's really amazing. Uh, 22 years old. She's going to be turning 20, 20. She's going to be turning 23 uh, this May, which is always during the time of the French Open. That's, to be honest, that's kind of how I remember, remember that. And uh, uh, yeah, she's a first ballot tennis hall of famer. It's pretty amazing. 22 years old, and racking up the prize money. So gotta love that for her and her family. Uh, Iga, her father. Um, she does have a sister. Did you know that? I'll leave you with that. Uh, I was reading today that Iga has a sister. A uh, sister is a dentist. Uh, presumably uh, living in Poland. So that's pretty awesome. I'll leave you with that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to, I'm, I'm trying to find happy notes here as the Igish fiance has lost. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Best Muscle Video on YouTube, please do so. Uh, it's super late right now. I'm actually, uh, as gross as this sounds, I'm, besides my face, I wash my face, but I'm so sticky right now because I went to the gym uh, right before uh, this match started and wanted to get back to watch it, uh, and, uh, put up some analysis on this, but, um, uh, please subscribe. It helps so much and, uh, keep watching. Uh, please let me know in the comments where she's playing next. And I am so sad she lost, but we will take a shower, get some sleep and reconvene tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a great day, very, very productive day. And thank you so much for thank you so much for watching. I know you have so many options on where you can watch your tennis videos. If you're watching on Best Muscle Video on YouTube and you have subscribed, you are the bomb. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys later. Hopefully, right back here tomorrow. We have many much more tennis to go. Uh, find out who's going to win the Miami Open.